Welcome back everybody to another Python Pandas tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over a few different ways that you can change the shape of your data including melt, stack, and unstack. Let's jump right in. The first thing you want to do is import pandas. For our first example let's go over melt. So melt basically allows you to change a data set or a data frame from a wide format to a long format. So we've gone ahead and created our data frame here and notice that we put in an argument called columns. Now the reason we did this is because without this the category header was way off to the right so we wanted it to stay in this order category and then range 0 to 100, 101 to 200, and 201 to 300. So by creating this variable with this data and then assigning it to the columns that seemed to fix that problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at our data frame category ranges df and you can see that this data set is in wide format and this format might be fine for viewing it however if you want it to be easy to work with we want to take these ranges that are column headers and put them in their own column and then we want the corresponding values off to the right now to do that let's create a variable let's go ahead and use our pandas library and access melt now inside the melt round brackets let's put our category ranges data frame and let's go ahead and put in an argument called ID vars and the ID vars that's where you want to put in your column or columns that you want to stay in its current format so for example this category column here we want that to stay in its basic current format now it can get larger but we don't want it to change shape so let's go ahead and assign that Let's just select this and run it. Let's go over to our console and put in the melt category ranges data frame variable here. And let's see how the shape of this data frame has changed. So you can see it went from a wide format to a long format. The category column has basically stayed the same. You can see it went from A to E and it goes from A to E. It just repeats. Then we took the ranges here, we put those in their own column, and their corresponding values are now off to the right. So as we mentioned before, this might be something you want to do if you want your data to be easier to work with. So for example, if you're going to feed this into a pivot table or into other programs so you can visualize your data, it can be common to want to take your data from a wide format like this to a long format. Okay, so that's our first melt example. Let's go over another one. However, in this case, we're going to pull in some CSV data. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the CSV data file. So we have it on our desktop here. Let's do a quick preview, and you'll probably notice right away it's in the wide format. And there's actually a couple problems with this data set, but the first thing we're gonna fix is the years. Now notice that the years go across the top, and we want the years in its own column, and then the corresponding values off to the right. So first things first, we've gone ahead and pulled in our CSV data and we assigned it to the data variable. Now to do that, we use pandas.readcsv and then inside the round brackets and the single quotes, we put our path, since it's on our desktop, and then we put in the file name. Now to fix those dates that go across the top, let's go ahead and do something similar like we did in this example. Okay, let's create our variable. Let's call it melt data one. Let's use pandas.melt. Now we're gonna use several different arguments and we'll explain each one. So the first thing we wanna do is put in our data. That's our CSV data that we pulled in. Let's go ahead and put in our ID vars. And remember, those are the columns that you want to stay in their current format. So you don't want them to change shape. Now real quickly, let's go back and look at our data. So we want the country, and for now, the variable, to stay as they are. And we want the years to go from wide format to long format. So let's put in country and variable. Okay, so for this example, for the next argument, we're going to put in value vars. 
And the value vars are the columns that you want to change from wide format to long format. And you don't have to put those in. However, if you want to explicitly put those in, you can do that. So for this example, we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll show you an example of where you can do the same thing, leaving those out and get the same output. So the columns that we want to change the shape for are the years. Now, instead of typing all these out, let's just go ahead and access our data and let's get the column names. So to do that, we can type out data.columns and let's just copy these years and let's put them in square brackets. Okay, for our next argument, we're going to put in var name and that is the new column name for the columns you want changed. And you can actually leave that out and it will default to a column name for you. However, if you want to explicitly state it, you have to put that in. So let's go ahead and put it in and let's name it year. We're going to do the same thing for the value name. If you don't put that in, it will default to a name. However, let's just go ahead and explicitly put it in and we want it to say values. Now, finally, we want this to be sorted in a specific order and we want it to be sorted by country, then variable, then year. So let's use sort values by country, variable, and year. Okay, let's go ahead and select this and run it. Of course, you can always just run everything by hitting this button here. Let's go ahead and clear our console and let's take a quick look at our data. Melt data one. Now right off the bat, you can see it's gone from a wide format to a long format here. Now a quick note, if you're ever looking at a long data set and it's not showing everything and you want it to and you're using Spider, you can use this code here pandas.set option display dot max rows and then put in the number of rows you want shown and you'll probably also have to go to preferences ipython console and then take a look at the number of lines here and make sure that that is large enough as well okay now something that you might also want to do from time to time instead of viewing all your data here in the console is to put it back into csv form now to do that you can use this code. So you just use your data frame that we created here, dot to CSV, and then put in the path of where you want it to be saved. So we're going to save this to our desktop with the name reshaped melt data file one. Okay, so we selected it and ran it. Let's see if it's on our desktop. And here it is. So here's a quick preview of the data. And then, of course, if you wanted to open that up into a spreadsheet and do further analysis, you could do that as well. Now, earlier we mentioned that you don't have to explicitly put in this value vars argument. To test that, let's go ahead and copy this and paste it below. And let's take this out and let's name this melt data 2. Let's select it and run it. We can take a quick look at it over here in the console. Melt data 2. And it looks to be the same, but just to make sure, let's create a CSV data file and compare the two. Let's select that and run it. Let's go to our desktop. Let's select both the files and we're going to open it with Excel. So here we have file 1 and here we have file 2. Let's select file two data and copy it over here. Let's make this full screen. Let's title this row and this row. And if you don't want to do a manual comparison to make sure all the values are the same and that they match, we can just use this little trick equals this value compared to this value. And then when we drag this down and over, it will compare each corresponding value to make sure it's the same. So let's go all the way down. And we have five columns. So let's go over two, three, four, five columns. Now you could take a quick look at this and make sure everything is true. So for example, you can see that in this data set, it's comparing the same value in this data set and making sure that they're the same. And if they're the same, it's going to show true. 
or if your data sets are really large and you're doing a large comparison, you really just want to look for the falses and make sure there are no falses. So to do that, we can do a count if for the range argument, we want to select all the data and then for the criteria, we want false. Let's make sure we have the correct arguments. M1 through Q73. So M through Q, 73 rows, and false. And you can see we get zero falses. Now, if something in this data set did not match something in this data set, so let's show you an example. Let's just make this one. You can see over here we get one. Let's make this A, B, C, and now we get two. Okay, so that's just a real quick way that you can compare the data sets and make sure that everything matches. Another way that you can test two data frames to see if they're equal that appears to work is by using equals. So we have created two data frames, data frame A and B, and currently they are equal, as you can see. And to use the equals, you can just simply use your data frame dot equals and then put the other data frame in the round brackets. We assign this to the variable match. So let's select all this and run it. Let's go to our console and put in the match variable and you can see we get true. Now let's change one of the elements to make these data frames not match. So let's make this 100. Select and run. Put in the match and we get false. So if you want more details and you want to know exactly what elements don't match, you might want to just go ahead and use the Excel method that we just demonstrated. Now let's go back to our original data set. And recall, the first thing we said we wanted to fix was the years. And we've done that. So we've used the melt to take the years from a wide format to a long format. But the other thing we want to fix is this column with the variable and we want each of these variables to be in their own column. And that will put your data set into a nice, ideal, tidy data set and make it easier to work with. So one way that we can do that is we can use a pivot table. So let's just create a variable called pivot. We're gonna go ahead and use this data here, melt data two. We're gonna use a dot and we're gonna access pivot table. Now for the pivot table, first argument, let's put in our values. Then for the index argument, let's put in country and year. And then for the columns argument, let's put in variable. Now for this tutorial, we're not gonna go into too much detail for the pivot tables, because we just wanted to focus on melt, stack, and unstack. However, we will go into more details in future tutorials for pivot tables. Okay, let's select this and run it. And let's take a quick look. Okay, so now you can see that the GDP per capita, lifespan, and population have all been split out into their own columns. Now, of course, if you wanted to turn that back into a CSV file, you could use your pivot variable dot to CSV, put in the path of where you want it to save, and the file name. Let's run it and take a quick look. Okay, so now we have our data set in a nice, tidy form that's easy to work with. We fixed the years, and we fixed the column that had more than one variable. Next up, let's go over stack and unstack. We have gone ahead and created a data frame here, so let's take a look at it. So we have three columns, A, B, and C, and we have five rows, one through five. Now, if we want to stack this data, let's create a variable. And let's use our data frame name, and then we can use stack. And make sure you put in the round brackets there. Now if we select this and run it, let's take a look and see how the shape has changed. So before, it looked like this, and when you use the stack, it changes shape and looks like this. Now notice that the A, B, and C that was in the wide format is now in the long format, and the corresponding values are off to the right. 
If you ever want to unstack, we'll just go over a real simple example here. Let's create a variable, unstack data frame. And let's just take this variable here, where we took our original data set and stacked it. And let's use unstack. Now if we select that and run it, we take a look you'll notice that we went from this form, then we stacked it, and it went to this form, to the long form, and then when you use unstack, it takes this long form and puts it back into the wider form. So those are just two real quick examples of what stack and unstack can do. Okay, so that's all we have for this tutorial on melt, stack, and unstack. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.